Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Apostle Paul says that death is swallowed up in victory for the believer in Jesus Christ. Here is Heidi, Terry, and Tim to sing, Goodbye, World, Goodbye. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions. We search God's Word, the Holy Bible, in order to find the answers. Question number one. What does Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15 mean? Let me read that for you. It is towards the conclusion of Jesus' great Sermon on the Mount. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. We know what a sheep is and we, do, we know what a wolf is. A sheep is something that we would not mind being close to. A wolf is most certainly something that we would not wish to be anywhere near, for it is an animal of attack, whereas a sheep is much more sedentary. And so here we have the comparison, Jesus saying, and early in the life of the new church, the, the first century church, there were false prophets, false teachers, false preachers, just as there had been false prophets all through the Old Testament and in Jesus' time in like manner. Je Jesus himself, he warns the people he says, watch out, be aware, be on the alert. 
you shall know them in a particular way. And my response is, what does it mean? And I say, keep on reading, keep going. Don't stop at that verse, but read the following verses, verses 16 all the way down to verse 27, where Jesus clarifies who he is talking about and how you would know these individuals. Verse 16, you will know them by their fruits. And he repeats that once again in verse 20, you will know them by their fruits. And Jesus even says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, which is a term of honor, but not everyone who just verbalizes or you gives lip service, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. And so Jesus begins this portion of the Sermon on the Mount, the concluding words as he draws to a conclusion. He says, beware, you have heard my words. You have drunk of the living water. You have fed upon the living true bread of heaven, which I have brought to you. Don't turn away from this rich spiritual food in order to feast upon the dry husks that the false prophets, teachers, and preachers who will, will bring to you, and you will know them, you will know them, see what their life is like, and be vigilant, be alert for your own spiritual health and for the spiritual health of others. Question number two, do we receive the Holy Spirit when we are born again? And following with that, does the Spirit indwell every true believer? John chapter 14, 15, and 16. These are the, this is the teaching section which John records for us of Jesus immediately before he gives the high priestly prayer in John chapter 17, and then Jesus is gone from them. He goes through Gethsemane and through Pilate's judgment hall, he goes to Calvary's cross. John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus is preparing his disciples for what would come hereafter, giving them words of comfort, giving them words of assurance, speaking to them most especially about the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 and verse 16, he says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it do does not see him or know him, but you know him and hear these words because he abides with you and will be in you. Does every spirit indwell every true believer? The answer is yes. We would not even be born again, except it were by the Spirit of God. We would not have come to salvation except the Spirit had taken the things of Christ and made them real to us and drawn us to salvation, brought us to life. Now. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, and also chapter 5, verse 18, also have good counsel on this. Ephesians 4, 30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We can grieve the Holy Spirit and hold off the Holy Spirit. Uh, Paul says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed, for the day of redemption. And Ephesians 5, 18, do not get drunk with wine for that is dissipation, but be filled, be filled, be chock full of the spirit of the living God. This is the real question. The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Holy Trinity and therefore has all of the attributes of divinity. And one of those attributes is that he is omnipresent. And so the Holy Spirit is also present 
at the lives of unbelievers, he is everywhere present. The question is, is your life, dear friend, dear brother, sister in Christ, is your life full of the Holy Spirit? Or are you saying, Lord, I love you. I'm so glad that I'm a child of God. I'm so glad that I'm going to heaven, but there are these corners in my life. They, they are still precious to me. I really don't want your attention to be drawn to those places. I don't want to surrender them to you. They are still little holdouts. Are you saying, Lord, every part of me, I surrender. I absolutely surrender myself to you. I want your spirit to permeate me in every fiber. So the Holy Spirit indwells you, but are you holding the spirit off? Are you hesitant to let the spirit have control and have his way? Oh, surrender, I pray, I, sur I encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit of God to have full sway in your life today. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. The full group now comes to sing, My Home, Sweet Home. We read in the Gospels that as Jesus taught, the common people would gladly listen to him. They would get up early in the morning to hear the master's gracious words. A key part of their eager interest was because of the parables Jesus gave. More than 10 years ago, Pastor H.H. H. Barber preached a series of 22 Faith to Live By sermons from the parables. These messages have been printed in the book, A Certain Man Had Two Sons. 
This book includes a bonus CD of many of the parables being read from the King James Version by Jim Barber. You will enjoy digging into the parables with this helpful resource. Ask for your free copy of Two Sons with the bonus CD when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6, or call toll-free 1-833-367-3877. Or visit faithtoliveby.ca. This book, Two Sons and the Bonus CD, is sent free and postage paid and is yours simply for the asking. May it be used of God to help you grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And just before the message, Heidi Tave sings The Holy City.
We have so far asked the question, who is this man? Even as the disciples, what manner of man is this that we are following? And we look to Jesus. He is the Son of God. He is God incarnate, and He is God's Lamb. We continue with a fourth message, and we consider that Jesus is the unblemished one. That does not mean that he never encountered a struggle or a difficulty during his journey, during his pilgrimage on this earth. For we have it plainly recorded for us in Matthew's Gospel and of the other Gospels of how that Jesus was tempted of the devil in the wilderness for a period of 40 days. At the outset of his ministry, he is led of the Spirit into the wilderness. It is specifically in the plan of God that Jesus be impelled into the wilderness to confront the devil toe to toe and nose to nose, and the devil doing his best in order to cause Jesus to fail, to cause Jesus to stumble. Are you looking for a leader that is worth following? Are you looking for a savior who is more than able to lead you forward because he knows the way in which we might stand against the tricks against the devices of the devil? Are you looking for someone who is tried and true, or are you looking for someone who might be able to do the job? If you are looking for a mighty Savior, then you need to look to Jesus Christ. If you are already a believer in Jesus Christ, you can have the full confidence of heaven and earth that Jesus Christ is more than able to care for you, to watch over you, that he is the shepherd who never slumbers or sleeps. He is the great and the good shepherd. And we read in Matthew chapter 4 that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. Other Gospels, they record that Jesus was tempted for 40 days. And then at the end of those 40 days, we have the three encounters which are specifically listed for us here. And Jesus, he is not simply tried three times. I think that many of us would say, oh, if in my life, I had only been tried, if I had only been tempted three times and three times alone, I would have been rejoicing. For it seems that every day, and indeed every day, does have its trials and temptations. But Jesus was not tried just once. And even at the end, it says that the devil left him until a suitable opportunity, until a time where the devil, as that crouching lion could pounce on him in a moment when he thought that Jesus might be vulnerable. I hold out to you Jesus, the Lamb of God, Jesus, the one who is unblemished, not because he was untried, but because he was tested, he was tempted, and yet he was victorious, and he is the one who is able to cause you to stand against the wiles of the devil. Let us continue to read. The, de the tempter, Satan, came and said to him, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread. Jesus replies all three times in a particular way. He does not, even as the son of God, say, now look, devil, I'm the Son of God, you were that great angel, Lucifer, you were the most exalted of all the angelic host in heaven, and you know who I am. Jesus, he goes to the written word of God in order to hold in his hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and to hold high the shield of faith even as the Apostle Paul describes it for us. 
Jesus says, Devil, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The devil then took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you. Jesus then replies, On the other hand, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus goes to the scriptures. We can as well. Again, the devil showed him, took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And Jesus doesn't say, oh, devil, you don't know what you're talking about. There was glory in those kingdoms, but there is far surpassing glory. And Jesus replies once again, it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus unblemished, yet he had been tempted and tried. Follow after him and take up his good counsel. Take his example to the word of God each and every time. And may the Lord bless you richly. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.